everybody. It's me, Sai, from Happy Accident Studios. We are here in the craft room today, live, because I got a lot of stuff to do. So, with no further ado, let's look down at the table and see what's going on. Right, so here's the situation. It's my daughter's birthday very soon, and she's having a very small slumber party at the house um, for herself and three friends, and it uh, although I have missed the window for sending out invitations, I have actually um, still got time just to make goodie bags. And I always make them from scratch because I really don't like those plasticky ones that you get from the shop. I mean, you know, I'm grateful for anything that my child gets sent home with from a birthday party, but I like something that doesn't melt the color off onto your hands if you get a bit sweaty. So today I'm going to make them from scratch and uh, for those of you who actually know me and have known me for years you've probably seen this before but everyone else is new and so I am going to show you how to make gift bags out of da -da 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 -da, envelopes right these are quite large ones if you're in the UK this is what you call a C5 envelope it's like if you um, if you folded a piece of office paper in half and then put it in an envelope, this would be the envelope you would put it in. So I guess if you're American, then it would be an envelope for a uh, eight and a half by six and a half piece of paper. So it's that envelope, it's the envelope we're talking about today, not the paper, so it's slightly bigger. And we're going to be decorating the bags with a strip of um, like a distress stained pattern which is why I've got this ranger distress stain here and I've got four colors with me I've got evergreen bough peeled paint pumice stone and wild honey they make a nice color combo I have a little sheet somewhere where's that ever the queen of preparedness I actually don't have it oh I do look look here are some color schemes that I made earlier and I quite like this one, but kind of crossed with that one somehow and a little bit of that thrown in. So that's what I'm kind of going for. Um, and it was important that I coordinated it with some ribbon, which I have here. This is just, I guess it's centimeter. Is it centimeter? Yeah. Centimeter thick ribbon from Mayflower. That's M-E-I flower. That's where I buy my ribbon from. I found it to always be good quality and good price, so you can't lose, can you? So, while the envelopes are still flat, let's seal them up. That's the first thing you've got to do. Sadly, I am licking them. Not good for food hygiene, so don't put food in these. I'm licking it. And do make sure as well when you go to fold the flap down that it is properly flat. Because sometimes if you seal the envelopes wrong, it can warp it somehow and it, you won't have a flat piece to work with. And you always need a flat piece to work with. So, we're going to be using inking techniques direct to paper and we're also going to be stamping over it. To give it a little interest as well so we are sealing the envelopes don't panic they will be useful objects eventually okay so I like to do stamping and things to decorate my envelopes with so I'm laying it on this graft craft sheet because I really want it to be straight nothing I ever do ends up straight Okay, so I'm laying this down flat and straight according to the grid lines. Now I'm taking some low-tack masking tape and I have found previously that this needs a bit of de-sticking. So I'm going to use my trousers. You can't see me doing this, but I'm sticking the tape to my trousers and then I'm pulling it off. And what that does is it puts the fibers of the trousers onto the tape, which hopefully will make it slightly less sticky so that when I peel it off, it will be clean. Now I'm only 
I'm eyeballing which of these measurement lines I want to use. So there's one. I'm going to get the rest of these out of the way. And I just want a thin strip to work with here. So I'm going to place the other one. I don't know how far to go with it, actually. Um, maybe five centimeters ought to do. That's fine. Might be hard to see because of the light situation. Let's hold up a shade or something so you can sort of see. Can you see where the tape is if I do that? Yeah, it's going across and it's masking off an area here. That's the area that we're going to put color in. So let me have a look just to see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that's eight centimeters up. All right, so between the 8 centimeter and the 13 centimeter line from the bottom is where I am putting the color. Now, distress stains, these are the original distress stains. Um, they also have spray now. And if you want to use spray, you're going to have to mask everything above and everything below. Okay? But I'm using these distress stains, which are like dabbers, a bit like bingo dabbers. And what happens, and I will show you on another piece um, scrap paper. You know, you'd think I'd have it lying around, wouldn't you? But I don't. Um, gosh, that's terrible. Okay, well, I need a paper towel for later, so let's use that. Right. Basically, if you dab like that, you get little dots, but that's not what we're doing. What the dabbing motion does is it opens a little valve underneath this um, spongy surface, and it lets just a small amount of stain out. So what we're going to do, starting from the lighter colors to the darker ones, so as not to contaminate the yellow, we are going to just wipe it. I may need to dab it once just to get it started, but what we want is this streaky effect. Right. And what I like, what it tends to look like when you're done and I'm not sure if it's going to on, on your screens today, but what it tends to look like when, when you've finished all of this streaks is that it tends to look a bit like weathered wood, but in a certain color scheme of your choosing. And I think that's pretty good. So I'm going to just gently, without doing a lot of releasing of the product at all, I'm just going to use what's on the sponge to make the streaks. And I would really like this to be mainly blue, if I can. So I'm finishing off with the blue. I'm going over the green and yellow areas. And what that'll do for me is that's going to give me different hues of blue, blue-green. Like that. And depending on how you like it, you know, you can leave small bits of, of leftover sort of still white paper if you want to. Or you can do your best to cover it up. doesn't matter so much, but I'm going to add just a little bit of this slightly darker pumice stone here just to give it a bit of a dusky look to it. It looks a lot darker here than it does in real life, just to, to let you know. These, these colors are quite vibrant. Um, I love them, but uh, they're just not showing up as vibrant. This one is positively glowing, but you can't see it in my light. Is it? Like, how can I block this out? Can you see yet how wonderful that is? I feel like it's really hard to... Yeah, you can't really tell, but... It is a lovely set of colors, for sure. So, let's just have a quick, I'm just letting it dry just for a second. And checking some technical stuff. Which may or may not be working, who knows? 
anyway now that we are sort of on the dry side now but the lights are helping but um, you can leave this to dry naturally if you want the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add some visual texture um, we are going to use this um, stamp it's called en francais from stampin up it is a large background stamp unfortunately um, for those watching it is discontinued as far as i'm aware sorry about that um, there's a lot you can do with this if you want it to be if you want the writing to be quite crisp on it you can use distress ink or any other any other ink really if the wetter this is the more the distress ink will bleed and your lettering will look slightly less crisp however if you want an even less crisp look and you want like a washed out look you can use the dabber to ink the stamp but today I'm going for the middle ground. I'm going to use this on wet paint. Why did I just do that? <laughs> I'm not thinking. And um, basically what I've done is I've stuck the stamp to the empty box, which is, which is stupid because it won't work as an ink pad very well. But anyway, I've done that. Now you'll notice that the stamp isn't big enough to cover here or here, but that's okay. Because of how we're going to be putting this together later, it really doesn't matter that it hasn't gone that far. Okay, so that's the first part. Now, let's peel back our tape. But keep it stuck down on one side. And what we'll do is we will just flip this over. And we'll use the same lines, again, that it's lined up with. And we'll just put the tape back down. And we're gonna do the same thing on the back. Now you might wanna just check against your grid to make sure that your lines are straight. Straight or straight-ish, right? I mean, if you're a perfectionist, yeah, go for it. If you're not, don't matter really. But there you go. Our lines are where they were on the other side. So let's get started again and do the same thing. So we got some, ooh, that's getting really yellowy. Okay, let's go in with the green. This side is the back, and, and because it's got this V where the envelope has been put, uh, the back flap of the envelope is, you might get a bit of a, like, the ink catching on the edge. But you know what? If it bothers you, you can buy expensive bags. <laughs> I just happen to like the fact that this is not only easy but because i've already got all this stuff anyway it's well cheap and i get to be creative with it so it's good for me i like this i make these bags all the time and i try and sort of shake it up every year and do something a little different but this is what i am doing now so just gonna give it a minute to try maybe dab it a bit And I'm going to come back in with my stamp. I mean, you, you know, it's good if you've got some kind of, you know, stamp block or something. I can't find mine at the minute, the one that's big enough for this. So it's happening like that. And that's fine. I think a lot of the time when you're using a stamp for um, just for adding texture to the background, you don't really need all of it to be touching and it's, it doesn't have to be a perfect alignment and it doesn't have to be a perfect impression. So the pressure's really off in this case. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to lay my tape across 
over here to be ready for the next one, which I am not going to do until later. I'm going to show you all the steps for this one first. Right, the next thing that I was doing is I'm going to stamp a little bit. I'm going to over stamp a little bit of a border as well. And in order to do that, I have brought in, to ensure an even impression, I brought in my giant purple stamping pad. This is um, from a company that, I don't know if it still exists or not, um, but they used to have a set of stamps called CDs. And uh, they were kept in CD cases, and you could see... You know, it was the, one of the ones that used a clear block like this, but the stamps themselves weren't clear. They were on this purple rubber. And uh, they were great. But as these smaller stamps are, they, there's no cushion. So you need to put the cushion under the paper to ensure that if there's any irregularities in the stamp surface, you'll still get a good, complete impression. So that's what I'm doing today. Um, I'm just going to ink up this little border stamp, and, ooh, do you know what? I actually do need some kind of scrap paper or something. <laughs> oh, well, I'll try this anyway. Um, so we will go with this. Like I say, it's not going to be perfect because... This is the envelope side, and it's going to clash sometimes and catch in the wrong areas and stuff. We survive. We live to stamp another day. There we go. And the other side, same thing. It is really strange that I don't actually have scrap paper on me. I don't know how that happened. Very strange. But like I said before, if the image doesn't go all the way to the edge, that's fine. We will be folding those edges in. And yes, I've got a little fingerprint or something down there, which I'm not picky about, but I wish it wasn't brown. My fault for using brown. Okay. Now, for the moment, that is the decoration. But... You'll see later, I'm gonna add a little bit to that, but right now that's what that looks like. Now, this is going to answer your questions about how on earth we turn an envelope into a bag. So, I learned this ages ago. I mean, I really mean eons ago at a Stampin' Up! party that my friend Morgan Moss was hosting a long, long time ago, and uh, this is what she's told us. You take your envelope, and you want to score an equal line down this side, the bottom, and the other side. So choose a measurement and stick with it. Okay, so I'm choosing one inch, and the reason I'm choosing one inch is so that the bag will be two inches wide. Now we're also going to do the hoogie trick. Whoop! which is to flip it over and score it down. Whoops, ooh, that's terrible. Score it down both sides of the paper so that when you fold it and you fold it back on itself, you get lots of movement, which is what we need, okay? So that's one side. Here comes another side. I don't know why I'm not used to this. I actually made one of these this afternoon, but I had a bit of a recording problem, and it just wasn't working. So, 
I'm doing this over again. So I should be an old hat by now, especially since I've been doing this for I don't know how long. Every so often I pull this trick out again. All right. So that's it. We've got our our top and our I mean sorry our sides and our bottom with the same score lines on them and they can fold and both of these folds I mean all three of these folds rather can fold in both directions quite easily oh that's lucky that horrible fingerprint ended up on the bottom of the bag great news and um, the other thing I like to add is on the corners I like to draw or rather score I like to score a diagonal I'm trying to get this accurate it isn't always the case there we go right so that is those are our diagonals and I'm folding these in both directions like that. Now, next we are going to slice. We are just going to slice the top off of our bag. That's it. This turns our flat bag into an openable thingy. That's a technical term. So, Let's see what we're going to do with our openable thingy. We're going to stick our hand in it. And we are going to pop out the bottom corners. And that quite conveniently brings up our little triangle. You see that? Sorry, shadow. See the triangle? That's a triangle we made with our little our little diagonals that I added to the corners. So we squash that, we fold it, right? And we make sure that our bottom is nice and rectangular like so. And it's time for liquid glue. So I like to put some liquid glue on the points here of my lovely triangle. Alright, and then, whoop, a lot of good that did. <laughs> then what we need to do is to fold these down, place the bag open on a surface, can you see in there? And then we're going to use the glue bottle to just press down, using the edge of the glue bottle inside the bag to press down those flaps so that they get a good adhesion. Might have to try a bit harder with this one. It's not sticking. You'll be a good bag. Okay, It'll stick eventually. And then we take the sides that are pointed out like this and we point them in like this. And then we can make sure that our bottom seam, our side seams fold in like this. Don't squash it too far down to the bottom because we don't have any little little line there to fold the end up. So once they're like this, they're like this, okay? Once you've glued the bottom, you are stuck. Let me just give that end just a little bit more of a press with this glue bottle just to make sure it stays down. Yep, I've got glue all over my woogie board now and glue all over here that's nice okay so we are not there yet we've got one more thing to do and i should have done it before i folded all this in <laughs> okay so this is fun i'm going to take this and i'm going to score one inch in from the cut edge and i'm going to do it again on this side boogie trick because it needs to be really mobile as a fold. Now this could be good. If you want to fold your bag 
then you're done. You load that bag up, you fold it, you can make a little topper for it, and then staple it shut. You are done. What a pretty bag. But that's not what we're doing. So, we are going to open this back up. And then we are going to take the sides and we are going to manhandle this inside out, like so. And now we have... We have like a, like a hem, I guess you'd say. It's a little turn turn in to make the edge look a little bit better. Whoop. Although I am creasing this to death as we speak. Right. Now, this strengthens the upper edge of the bag so that you can put a little ribbon handle on it. So, this length of ribbon is about 60 centimeters. Um, I actually laid it out and measured it. And this specific one is 53 centimeters. But yeah, just make sure if you're making a bunch of these that your ribbon length is the same or else all of the, you know, if you stand them all next to each other, they kind of look funny if the handles are all different sizes. Right. We need to punch holes in the top of the bag for the handles. So I'm going to be using my handy dandy Carapa dial for this and I'm using the larger hole of the two which is I believe hold on <laughs> the 3 16th inch hole which is that one there and I've got the depth regulator here set to half an inch so that I can do this And this. Right. That's how we are going to weave our lovely handles through. So, in one hole out the other. Try not to twist it. Just keep it, keep it nice and flat. All right. Get it through the other hole. And then when these two come back together, we are going to tie them in a double knot. So this side over and this side over. And then I like to hide the knot. So I'm going to trim this a little, trim this down a bit. Just so that the tails are quite short. Once you're sure that your knot is stable enough. These are terrible scissors to cut ribbon with. Here we go. Okay. I like to hide my knot inside the bag. So it's going to go in here. Like that. Can you see where it is? It's down there. So that's where it's going to go, and then the two handles come up like that. And there you have the bag itself. Isn't it cute? I love it. It's just the right size to put little, little goodies in, little tiny notebooks and pencils and little pens, which is what I like to give out, because who doesn't like fun stationery? Also, as an added decoration, I have um, stamped and die cut these little happy birthday flags. And I've got some of these little ribbon flowers that I just got from like a little crafty swap, I think. And here we go. So I think I'm just going to use the good old sticky glue. And I'm going to do it on the front side, not the back because I prefer the front side. I'm going to stick this happy birthday, I guess, here somewhere. Just put a bit of, just a little bit. Stick the happy birthday there at a jaunty angle. And then some glue onto the fabric. This, this glue is okay for fabric and ribbon as well as for paper. So I'm going to stick that there, and I'm going to stick this here, and 
hopefully, hopefully that is good enough for Little Miss. I'm sure she'll love them, and I hope you love them. So that is how I make a little birthday favor bag out of an envelope. Um, I hope you liked this little tutorial. Um, if you have any questions at all, please do get in touch. There are many, many ways you can do that. And if you're watching this on Twitch, all of my contact details are in my profile. If you're watching on YouTube, you should be able to get similar information from my Google Plus page. Um, you can leave a comment. If you like this tutorial, please give it a thumbs up or a like wherever you are, depending on where you're watching this. And um, do subscribe if you'd like to see more. I've got a lot on my plate craft-wise in the next month or so. So do keep your eyes open. And I will be posting as much as I can in the lead up to my craft fair, which is why I've got to be crafting like my life depended on it. I've got a lot, a lot to show you. So I have been Sai. This has been Happy Accident Studios. You can contact me on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, or Vine at HapX Studios. That's H-A-P-A-X Studios. You can also find me on Facebook. That's Facebook.com slash Happy Accident Studios. All one word, big long word. And I have a website. That's www.HappyAccidentStudios.co.uk. And you can contact me at Sy, S-Y, at happyaccidentstudios.co.uk. Um, if you live in the Medway area of Kent and you would like to drop me a line and, you know, we could have a class. We could meet up, have coffee, do some crochet, do some paper crafting. Let's get to know each other. Contact me. Let me know what you like and uh, I will attempt to provide that for you. So... I will be back very soon with my next tutorial. I hope you like this one, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.